first of all, thank you so much uh, for taking the time and to do this interview. Um, it's been kind of crazy, I guess, for everyone the latest year and a half. How has everything been for you and Lepros? Um, relatively okay uh, compared to many others, I think. Uh, we've kept ourselves quite active and, and we got to do two tours for pitfalls right before the last one was kind of right before the uh, pandemic started so we I, I consider us to be one of the lucky bands uh, and we also managed to do a lot of streams and um, and record music compose music and so we, it's just like uh, it's not like uh, touring is the only thing we can do so we it's it's of course been challenges like everyone has said but you can either adapt to the situation and do something or you can think about how much better things used to be before. <laughs> yeah, well, you were one of the bands actually that was, or at least in my opinion, one of the most active bands that, during this whole period because you've had a lot of live streams as well and you worked on music. Do you feel it was like a necessity for you guys to stay busy to kind of survive this whole time off in a sense? Yeah, uh, to, to do all these live streams and, and everything, everything, it was just so important for us in many different ways. It's uh, one of the reasons it was important is, of course, because we, we are performers. We like to perform. It's a big part of our personality have become over the years. And, and uh, for us to just suddenly stop what we're doing would not really be an option, you know. Uh, so so we just figured out how to deal with it quite quickly and 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 we've just been going on with that and doing many many like a lot of live streams actually and um and i think uh, and it's always it's also kind of helped us uh, economically through the situation and so for us we're definitely like uh um uh, yeah uh, we learned a lot through this uh, pandemic as well, uh, how to do things in different ways. And so not not everything is uh, negative, no. Yeah, actually you put it really nicely in the statement you did for the press releases. You said something among the lines of it's not about thinking about what you have had and what you miss about it, but about what you actually have and what you can do with it. Um, exactly. The sort of attitude that inspired you to write this new album for instance yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. suddenly you have a lot of more time some time on your hands either you can sit and play playstation and wait for everything to go over which i also did by the way but uh <laughs> but uh or you can uh or you can actually write music which i believe to be the main part of what we're doing uh because without the music we don't have the performance part either so uh, music comes first and then everything else is uh, a secondary thing. Yeah. Mm. So that to suddenly have more time to write music is not necessarily that negative either, I think. Now in 2020, I think you released Castaway Angels. Was that kind of, was that the first song you wrote for this album? And was, because I read that it was originally uh, your goal to make an EP, yeah. but what made you change your mind? It was the fifth song we wrote for that album. Um, uh, the first two songs we wrote for that album were um, On Hold and uh, Silhouette. So those two we had already uh, at um, uh, the Pitfalls uh, recording. Uh, we, we recorded it together with Pitfalls actually. And it was two songs that we really liked that we, but we didn't just didn't find any way to fit them into the album. So we decided to build something else around them later. So that was planned to be an EP first. Uh, and we had two other songs that were also recorded for Pitfalls that we were not happy with at all. Uh, so we this but the, the but, uh, and one of them was Silent Revelation, uh, the single we just released, and and it was kind of. Um, like it had a few night sections and the sections and we threw away everything else and then we just built the whole new song 
new chorus, new intro, new outro. Uh, it was only the verses uh, that we kept actually more or less as they were. Um, so, uh, so we built a whole new song around that and around the drums. And then we have the song, The Shadow Side, which uh, we threw away the whole song, but we kept only the drums. Uh, because the drums all sounded great there, so we built a whole new song around uh, the drum part. Um, and uh, and then it was the Castaway Angels project. Um, and we, that was just like we went into the studio with uh, just some simple guitar and vocal ideas. Uh, and then we just played together and recorded it live in the studio eventually. Uh, and... Um, uh, and at that point, we started considering, okay, is it maybe a better idea to make an album out of this? Because it's start, starting to feel a bit too much for an EP. And EPs are not really very a very relevant format in our genre anyway. So, uh, yeah. Now, you mentioned that um, Gastaway Angel was... Um yeah, a, a bit improvised in the studio. And I read that um, you called the process of this album uh, very intuitive. And some mm -hmm. of the songs were created that way, but and other songs were created uh, like the way you used to do it. Uh, but then I also read that you also included fans in the writing process. Now, I was wondering how, how did that go about? Yeah, uh, so that was uh, the last song of the album, Nighttime Disguise, also the last song we wrote for the album. Uh, and we wrote that earlier this, wrote and recorded it in the same week uh, earlier this year. Uh, and uh, that was just like a, an idea that I came up with that I thought would be fun to kind of just um, go into the studio to, to put the 24-7 live stream uh, for six days. Uh, so and and just see what we can come up with and people and the, and the fans were able to kind of watch everything we did in the studio basically uh in real time and the whole process of of both composing and recording um so uh, and how they were involved is that we made a poll in advance with lots of different parameters that they could help choosing like for example like time signatures uh, uh, instrumentation, dynamics, uh, tempo, the key, um, and uh, like vocal styles, etc. So, so we just like wrote down a lot of things, and of course, we ended up with a completely random combination of things because everyone has so different opinions, and and the end result ends up being a really strange combination of uh, of. Uh, things that you have to to deal with but it was fun to write a song based on those restrictions and, and we kind of did that and it was a fun project we did that this one time and and that's it uh it was a lot of fun for for us and it was fun for the fans too i believe from what i heard how do you look back to the song now that it's finished i like it uh and and of course in the end we wrote the song after our own preference just with a lot of strange restrictions basically so we tried to make a song that we liked as much as we could like uh, like it with those restrictions in a way so so but but still having to so it, it's good sometimes to 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 make restrictions for example like it can be that you suddenly decide one day okay i this song i want to write with the layers of clarinets only for example we've never done that before and see what will become about it it's just like it kind of just um, if you set a lot of restrictions it it just uh takes you somewhere you wouldn't have gone normally uh and i am a big fan of uh, uh going out from your comfort zone so yeah is that something you might do again in the future no uh, because we've done it already now, uh, that uh, uh, that concept. So uh, it was fun. It worked, and then we stop uh, while we still have a good experience with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, does the fact that you know this whole lockdown, I think artists learned how to 
maybe interact with fans in a different way? Do you think that the idea came from kind of that and, and learning how to... Yes. Yes, uh, definitely, definitely. That's what it came from. And, and just like uh, using uh, the internet for what it's worth, basically, uh, for actually being able to 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 reach out and communicate with our fans uh, despite not being able to go... Uh, out on the tour so in, in a way we kind of communicated more with them this year than what we normally do because normally i just go on stage and i play the concert and then i don't see them afterwards there so i i don't very often go out and talk after the shows or anything uh, so it's it's um uh it's so so yeah i i really f- felt uh, that we kind of connected almost more with them this year than than usual now one of my personal favorite songs of the new album is the opener running low uh is there anything mm-hmm. you can tell about that song like how did it yes. came to be yes definitely uh because i wrote that song uh firstly on my phone on the way up the mountaintop i just used this super small uh keyboard uh, on my phone that I was just okay I, and that was about the making limitations again I thought like uh, okay let's just try just for the sake of it to write the song on the way up to a mountaintop because it makes no sense uh, and it didn't feel like it made any sense whatsoever uh, when um, when I did it uh, in the beginning on the way up just I was tired and exhausted and trying to write at the same time on the crappy uh, smartphone uh, keyboard and uh, and it was just like oh, this is awful um, but it's at least it's a bit comical so maybe we could just make some we, we filmed it too and maybe we can make a kind of comical situation out of it but uh, then I came home and, uh, and went further with the material and then I was actually able to take it somewhere and quite quickly after I, I, I came with like the main structure of Running Low, which we later on met uh, in Sederberg Studios, uh, actually, in, in Christian Sand to, to um, play and make it a proper song together in the studio then afterwards. So, yeah. Now, for that song and for Nighttime Disguise, which we talked about earlier, uh, you used a, a brass group this time around. Mm-hmm. Uh, no clarinet, I guess, but... Um, mm-hmm. How was the experience for you working with them? And is it fun for you to include different instruments in in your music? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I didn't even meet meet them during the recordings. They just got their parts uh, sent on MIDI and they just did it. And we got it back perfectly. And then that was it. It so, uh, so, But it was a lot of fun to get the great result that they gave. And and I was... uh, the reason I included in the first place is just I got this brass library for to work with for another project that I was uh, doing, like I was uh, doing some uh, string and brass arrangements for some some other project, and and uh, and then I started like playing around. I really like that brass library, but at, then to play around with and use it in in composition for leper stuff as well. And uh, but I'm not a big fan of of using sample for the main product. So we, I just asked Bard if he knows uh, any a good uh, a brass group that could potentially do this. Um, and uh, he uh, he uh, knew, of course. So, and so then he just went in contact with them and, and that's it. Mm, and they were able to do it. So. Now, in, in Pitfalls, you started using guitars in a different way than you're used to in your music, and you even had some acoustic guitars uh, included as well. So how would you say uh, for fans that how, how are you using the guitars in this album? Is it kind of a mix between your earlier work and, and Pitfalls, or what can you tell about that? Um, I would say it's just like uh, we whenever using guitars now like the it's it's a quite free process these days uh if you go back to an album like uh congregation for example and also malina to a big degree all i have I've already written all the guitar parts exactly how, how i wanted them and 
and but from pitfalls and on to till today it's it's more like it's a more free process people kind of uh, i make the main composition typically and then uh the guitar players kind of do their own thing on on there you know so if there is no guitars on the section it's probably because we just agreed together ah, it doesn't need it right there and we it just it depends on the song it's all about the song yeah uh, do you feel because you know metal music in general and rock music it's so guitar driven how do you how have fans been you know able to process the fact that there's sometimes parts in your music where you don't use any at all yeah but that's also the reason why the rock scene has been standing completely still almost for 20 years now uh, it's because it's all based around that same sound like you just need to I mean, there are, of course, some innovative uh, things here and there. But when you see in commercial rock these days, it's very little new happening. Um, uh, and it's usually if someone does something new, it's bands that already did something new a long time ago already. So so it's it's like sound wise, it's a very restrictive way to, to have that. If you have that wall of guitar, uh, it kind of eats up the everything else almost uh so so we would rather want to use a guitar in a more to have a more dynamic approach to it if you constantly have this <sighs> like yeah this wall of sound uh, it it kind of doesn't it doesn't leave any room for for other things and there is no air left in the music and it kind of sucks the life out of it a bit uh, in, in my opinion when when everything is guitar based it's limited to how many things you can do with just constantly having uh guitar drums and bass playing at the same time you know there has been done an insane amount of different things with with that uh <laughs> instrumentation so so that's why we, we, we just try to, to use it. And we have a lot of guitars in our music. It's just like, it's not necessarily always riffs. Yeah. So, so you know, how fans process it and how people like it, that's just like something we cannot think about. We just make the music we make and either people like it or they don't. And it's, it's nothing we can, we, we don't control people's taste you know like if you try to please people i'm sure you would fail at it anyway uh <laughs> then people will say ah no this just sounds like uh, some ripoff of this and that yeah exactly that's why we're doing what we want to do uh <laughs> so now what i also remember uh, about last time is that you mentioned that for pitfalls you wrote a lot of the lyrics uh which you hadn't done uh, that much uh, at that point in time but um, uh, how was it for this album? And what are some the, some of the themes that you guys write about? Yeah, I, I think I did the majority also of the lyric writing for this album. And, and it's kind of a continuation of uh, what was started on It Falls because I felt like a, uh, anxiety and depression is kind of long-term subject that kind of takes quite a lot of time to gradually uh make a less and less dominant part of your life basically and that is kind of what it is about is about like the the solutions the setbacks the 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 patience about it and the acceptance and so so i would say that uh, it's kind of similar ish but it has uh, a much more it has much much more acceptance and a more solution oriented approach to the same subject basically yeah and i think you hear that pretty well in the music as well it sounds a little bit lighter uh, than mm -hmm. pitfalls less heavy yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 definitely uh it's definitely a bit less uh uh emotionally heavy uh, album i i agree with it but um i think uh at least me personally, I'm also less emotionally heavy than I was then, so it uh, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Are right. any of the songs uh, inspired by you know this kind of isolation that everyone's been going through with COVID, or are there any Corona songs in there at all? 
Uh, not like that point specifically to the pandemics, but a, a pandemic. But I would say that the the title and the cover is the closest thing we get to to something that is um, pointing to to the pandemic. And and the cover is just like you're standing inside of there in this pyramid type of uh, uh, building uh, in a beautiful kind of mountain landscape. But you're kind of confined to those. Uh, walls inside of the building you're in and you cannot you cannot go anywhere uh, you can only see everything outside without the possibility to do something but that's still uh, but still you you adapt and you and you do something about it despite that you're you're heavily restricted there is still a lot of things that you can do if you start looking <laughs> yeah uh yeah I read also that Adept was going to be the original title or something of the album, but it didn't work out in the end or something like that. Yeah, it didn't sound good. Uh, it uh, then made sense for what we wanted to express, but it didn't sound good. So for this album, you worked again with, with Adam Noble. Um, how was the experience this time around? It was awesome. He's such a great guy to work with, a really professional uh definitely one of the most professional guys i ever worked with and and he's um um he has a different sound than the, what you typically hear in in the metal scene it's no it's it's much more kind of bottom heavy uh so you kind of when you hear the bass drum hits you hear that it's a lot of bass in the bass drum not just like a click like you hear in a lot of metal these days like it's like like proper uh, and and so so I, I really like how he's able to make something sounding massive without it necessarily being out of a wall of guitars. Uh, so yeah, yeah, and I guess it fits really well with your music because it's already kind of so dynamic uh, in a sense, and he kind mm -hmm. of lifts it up even a little bit more. I would say. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I I I agree with you and. And that's what Adam is really good at. It's to, we, we spend a lot of time on the recordings uh, and that's, uh, and to, to actually, that what you hear is what is recorded basically. And that is not just sound replacement, which is becoming more and more common in, in especially metal these days. It's just like, it's typically um, uh, with the like digital, uh, digital, uh, amp simulators uh, of, of, of guitars and then also lots of sound replacements on the drums and everything so and it sounds kind of really good and powerful but it doesn't really have any character or 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 air in the sound so so that's why we spend a lot of time on the actual recordings in the studio to make it sound like like we want it to sound and then adam is amazing when it comes to really honoring the recordings, but it's making them shine properly. Yeah. Now you're also having a live stream, I think, uh, for the new album. What can fans kind of expect from that evening? Uh, the album in its entirety, <laughs> <laughs> two times. Uh, one time for the EU time zones, one time for the US time zones. Yeah. Are you looking forward to perform the songs live for? An it Virtual definitely, audience. definitely. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, it's of course a bit, a bit uh, terrifying uh, since you know, like this is the first impression that you give many people of the album, and if we do a really crappy show, then of course it's not very nice. But I think I think we're starting to get quite experienced with these live streaming formats. I think we should be able to avoid it, and we've also gotten used to diving into material this year that has been new for many people in the band like with the bilateral stream for example big parts of the band had never played many of those songs before so so i think it should be fun yeah now it's also your 20th anniversary as a band how do you look back to this whole time that you've been involved with lepros uh it's been a ride <laughs> Uh, a bumpy one uh, so lots of great things lots of setbacks and and it's been like a 
really, really slow uh, stone by stone process. Uh, we started as just a youth band. Uh, it was like really like one of my absolute first bands in general in my life. And it was Todos first real band too. And so it, it started from that and, and today where it's like a, a, a band that involves quite many, many people who works together with us and for us. And so it's, it's, it's been such a gradual, uh, gradual build. But uh, I look back on it uh, with a, in a very positive sense, mostly. Yeah, great. Um, well, I guess it's, it's about time, so I'm not going to keep you mm -hmm. any longer. But do you have any last thoughts you want to share with your fans or other people who stumble upon this? Uh, we can't wait to be out uh, playing uh, uh, for you uh, for real again, like uh, in, in an actual uh, venue with an actual crowd. But uh, until then, yeah, you can watch our streams. <laughs> <laughs>